Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadists for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. All right, we are live, I think. Yes, we are. We are. Hey, you're being recorded, Abdullah. We got to tell you that for legal reasons. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. No, we don't yeah, have to no. tell him that. It says it right on the top of the page. Armin, <laughs> is this, I'm sorry. Is this loud? Uh, no, no, your audio actually. Yeah, we don't have to no. tell him that. It says it right on the top of the page. Armin, <laughs> is this, I'm sorry. Is this loud? Uh, no, no, your no. audio actually is low. I don't know why. I say that's oh. a good thing. Let's keep it that way. Okay. Ah, I'm fixing it. I'm gonna go maximum volume. <laughs> That's good. Hello. Okay. Hello. Be fine. All right. Okay. We're making fun of you, Ali, in the live chat. <laughs> of course you are. Oh, why? Because uh, that's okay. It doesn't matter. History is on my side. You guys can mm-hmm. have. You can have the live chat audience. I'll just take <laughs> history. <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. That's a fair. Deal. Whatever right. makes you feel that better. Like, yeah. yeah. And uh, but, so before we start this, I just want to say to everybody on the live chat. Um, who is, uh, you know, obviously confused on this issue, right? As Armin is, um, please <laughs> go to Letters Wiki, uh, where me and Matt Thornton, the jujitsu. Hey, Ali, guy, don't start something because then I have to respond, and then you have to respond. And totally say to what I'm saying is that I'm not doing what I'm doing. I'm just saying that I have a, uh, I have carved out my case in a conversation with Matt Thornton, right, on this issue. And uh, please uh, go and uh, check it out whenever you get the chance. Let All right, speak. then I'll respond so similarly and saying I make my cases on Aces Republic channel and go check that out. That's fine. Yes, please do check out both. That's the whole idea. Like, Matt actually, Goldberg go ahead, check out Ali's. Case. A lot of people, Ali, do you don't plug your channel by the way? A lot of um, Ali has a, his own uh, channel. Check out Ali Rizwi. Yeah, um, I I started this out. thing called uh, Professional Novice. Professional mm-hmm. Novice uh, is basically is during this. Wait, COVID the channel time. is called Ali Rizvi, though. Well, yeah, I, I don't know how to change that. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I have to figure all these things out. It is, I haven't been promoting it much. Yeah, but you but tell it's, people it's called Professional Novice, and the channel's name is Ali Rizvi, and people don't know how to find it. So you have to. Called, yeah. This is why um, you guys. You guys suck at this. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, so it's called right now. It's called Professional Novice with Ali Rizvi, and the reason I started it is that a lot of times when I I'm talking about things that are not related to religion, Islam, atheism, and all that, like you know, I usually um, and sometimes when I just want to talk to my friends because I miss them during this COVID time. And Armin is going to be a future guest on it. He already committed. Um, yes. And what we do is on that channel, we get a chance to talk about things that we don't usually like. Ali, like can, I, can you come on Atheist Republic and debate me on this on the disagreements that we have regarding <laughs> the whole BLM? Yes, if you let me talk, Armin. I heard a little bit of the, uh, but well, I mean, yeah, I think I'm probably one of the few people I, who knows how to. Yeah, I think I can. I can do that. We'll do it. Okay, good. Let's do that. Let's do that on Atheist Republic. I'll come on your channel, and you come on Atheist Republic. Yeah, but so <laughs> the whole idea is that you come. Uh, the, this channel, the the thing is, on on professional office, we talk about things that are not necessarily related to what people not necessarily related to what people do. So Mariam Namazi, who's mainly an ex-Muslim uh, activist, came on to talk about Black Lives Matter, which isn't something um, that she normally talks about on other forums. So that that was the idea. So Armin's going to come on and talk about, we were going to talk about working out, right? Staying in shape. We're going to talk about girls, working out, diet, <laughs> yeah. um, on your channel. You're going to find out the side of Armin that you rarely ever see. So, here you go. That's not a good thing. <laughs> it's going to be that is, that is definitely not a good thing. Okay, so Anyways, let's, uh, let's, start. let's start, let's start. Let's kick off this episode. We're basically just gonna have fun over here. I don't want to take. We have a we have a little bit of time with Abdullah because he's very very disciplined in terms of when he sleeps and when he wakes up. <laughs> you know, like he has to get up for fajr and so on. Yeah, so, I don't the hajjud and uh, then I have to do fajr and then I don't go to sleep. I have to do the what's that salah called ishraq? You know, when the sun yeah, comes. The official greeting. 
but I want to keep all the stuff that we talk about. So yeah, everybody, you know, welcome to Secular Jihadist. This is the name of our podcast. It's called Secular Jihadist. And our guest today is actually one of our most popular guests in the past, who is here to talk about two really, really great episodes. One was on the Quran and the historicity, the history of the Quran, and, and the other was one on Muhammad. And um, Abdullah is uh, back with us. Abdullah Gondal is here. He is absolutely brilliant. He's one of the most brilliant guests we've ever had. Mm, extremely, uh, his videos on, uh, you, you do you do your own videos too, right? And you don't just do the stuff with Abdullah Samir? Uh, I still haven't come out with my own channel. Like it's been, been pushed back and back. But for now, like I'm doing mostly content with uh, Samir, uh, mostly live streams, but sometimes we call out video projects as well. But then I also uh, go on Haris Sultan's channel, uh, yeah. Pakistani Mulhid. Uh, trying to focus on that a lot more than the collab video projects as well. But then I also uh, go on Haris Sultan's channel, uh, yeah. Pakistani Mulhid. Uh, trying to focus on that a lot more because, you know, we could, we're trying to reach uh, an audience in Pakistan that is so isolated from these ideas and this new perspective of looking at Islam that uh, I feel like you, I'd make a video and this same video would be just translated in Urdu and I'll get literally 10 times more views just because the idea is so new to the people there. It is, yeah. And I think that what he's doing, we've had him on here a couple of times um, and he's been, you know, the, the stuff he's doing is having like incredible impact over there. So, uh, Abdullah, um, what we are here to talk about, and I think this is going to be really fun, is it's kind of easy in a way too, but it's just we have to, sometimes you got to have your time, yeah. is we are going to talk about coronavirus and Islamic theology. And we're oh, not yeah. going to talk about coronavirus, to be short. I mean, we're going to talk about just basically suggestions on you know medical science and, and uh, you know cures for illnesses that... Uh, that you know, Islam bestowed upon us, um, mm -hmm. and you know, th this is what Allah's view is. And I can tell you that Allah's view on healthcare is very different from <laughs> the, the just whatever I was trained in uh, when I became a physician. And that's probably one of the reasons I became an ex-Muslim as well. So this just shows your arrogance, Ali, to think that you know more than the creator of the universe. <laughs> By the way, for, I'm yeah. going to play the devil's advocate here of a mm -hmm. Muslim apologist. I'm going to try my best, but go ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, well, can we start with the flight? Okay, I want to see. No, no, let's get. Can... No, no, let's go to the corona stuff. For... All right, so yeah. coronavirus. Usually, most of the conversations you're going to hear about it are going to be very serious, be very ominous, it'll be very scary. It's obviously very. I just disclaimer. It's a very serious disease. Disclaimer. It's a very serious disease. Uh, we all know people who have been affected by it, and, and you know there are many people who have been killed by it. So all of that. Now putting that to the side, uh, what we want to do is um, we want to talk about some of the the. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to introduce it. <laughs> We're going to talk about how uh, some other views on it. Okay, so mm -hmm. so here here goes. So uh, what? Well, so one did the Quran predict coronavirus because they it predicted everything else apparently. Mm -hmm. I would say no, but there there I have seen people who have made that claim, and it's as uh, as far fetched as like you know those five G towers starting the virus and stuff. It's like conspiracy theory, like those mathematical miracles are like, oh, this worse comes here. I have heard a few people say that but generally no there was though initially when the virus started though with the outbreak was in china i remember muslim twitteration camps and whatnot uh, mm -hmm. so that was a whole thing uh, disclaimer i don't agree with china what china is doing at all uh, but then uh, it is ironic that the kaaba then gets shut down and then like nobody can go pray there and it's all there so then the people are like well what happened now it backfired right so yeah. there was that that, that whole okay, mindset. Bro, brother, 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 brother. Here, this, this is what you're doing right now. You're misrepresenting. You you just found you just went and found some ridiculous Muslims out there, and you're trying to paint a wide brush about what the Muslim population is. If you had any understanding of what Islam, if you actually knew your Islam, you would know that the punishment God does the punishment is for the afterlife. The the Every misery that we're feeling in this life is not meant to be a pu punishment. It means to be a test. And it's also meant to be an excuse for us to get closer to Allah. It's an opportunity. It's not a punishment. So well, please, stop, 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 please, stop, 
So please use for us to get closer to Allah. It's an opportunity. It's not a punishment. So well, please stop. So, so please stop. So please stop misrepresenting Islam just because some Muslims who are not scholars out there are saying some ridiculous stuff. This is not about Islam. This is just about them. Maybe just check your sources before you paint a, <laughs> such a white brush, okay? And, and my also, don't you know that coronavirus is probably uh, one of the things that will especially help you get very close to Allah, especially if you have comorbid conditions, if you have any sort of uh, uh, immunocompromised, um, if, you have any, if you're immunocompromised in any way. Uh, so you'll get actually very close to a lot. Yeah. So. It's like a short, short way, you know, like <laughs> it's almost like some people were saying it's like the the rapture, but just, just a little I understand that you ex Muslims just like to make your small jokes here and there and get a cheap laugh out of your you know, out out of your own community, but again, you know what I mean, and you guys, you know, you could just you're you know, not being a good you're not being a good apologist because you have to throw in words like yani and you have to say <laughs> no, yani gonna, and, and jazaka. No, 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 I'm no, I'm not gonna do that. Come on. No, okay. I'm gonna do I, this for an English audience. Doing that, that's not good. That's not being a good apologist. You lose your audience if you do use those. I words. like it. It keeps the it keeps the white people a little terrified every time you talk. No, I'm people. being an apologist to white people. Oh, wait, white people to English speaking people, not white people. Right. Uh, so I'm not gonna use words that they don't understand. But go mm. ahead. So Abdullah, can you respond to all of Armin's both? I mean, uh, his. <laughs> his uh, <laughs> Well, I was I was just speaking the mindset, right? Like the people have that it's this is because of our sins, and you know Allah is sending this test to remove our sins, and it just makes no sense. It's like why would God need to test us or punish us or put through these this misery and pain to take away our sins, right? You know, to purify our souls, as they say. Uh, test us or punish us or put through these this misery and pain to take away our sins right you know to purify our souls as they say uh but yeah actually one of the funny things was my dad uh, initially a couple of months ago uh, uh he was saying that why do you feel that the asian especially the muslim countries are the least affected by it and i went on a whole conversation with him where Oh, he was in my family members where Muslims do voodoo and stuff and like you know they pray a lot more like God's protecting them but then now I was talking to him a couple days back and I'm like okay Pakistan now has 140 some thousand cases now what like oh oh uh, so it's, it's it's very interesting but the whole mindset of approaching this that God is punishing people is it's kind of very uh, notice how these ex-muslims are celebrating the fact that Muslim that Muslims are getting coronavirus this is the oh true my god nature. this is the true <laughs> nature, the good true nature of ex muslim look how look they just seek they can't even hide their pleasure they're just like oh ha ha look look at all these muslims now getting disease look this is <laughs> this is what happens when you don't believe in religion no, in, this in, is in the a, morality way, of ex muslim <laughs> i mean I, I i can even make i can better make a better apologist claim and i can say that you know this is this is amazing what is happening this is a sign from allah like everybody is wearing the color. Men and women are staying six uh, segregation, apart, right? And uh, yeah, it's just that the, the whole thing is um, is disproportionately affecting black people. So that's another thing. It's, it's, it's a another. trial but, version of this Sharia. Is, this is how you know like Muslims don't even understand what Muslims are saying. They think this is the best. They they come up with these joke examples of some ridiculous Muslim saying stuff to try to represent what all Muslims are saying. They don't even go with the best arguments that they're making. They just go with the most ridiculous ones. This is, uh, of course, they're ex-Muslim because this is their understanding of what the Muslim community says and stands for. Okay. Uh, what does what does Islamic theology, Abdullah, what does, uh, about pandemics and plagues? I know that there are hadith about this. I know that there are many sort of different you know, claims, are there any Quranic claims, are, are there any hadith that you want to bring to light that might help us see this? There are claims, like, where there are some good things that Muhammad said, firstly, get them out of the way. To bring to light that might there, help us see this. There are claims, like, where there are some good things that Muhammad said, firstly, get them out of the way. Is Muhammad did say there's a pandemic, stay where you are and don't leave, which isn't miraculous advice. It's just generally, you know, just, just stay put common sense mm. uh, but one of the interesting things was he said that 
never will there be a, a pandemic or a big disease like this be able to enter, I think, the cities of Mecca and Medina, and there's angels guarding it. Mm. Uh, but we obviously saw that it definitely reached those lands, and the Kaaba and Masjid and Nabi were all shut down, and people actually died in those cities too. So it kind of brings back, like, that kind of disproves Islam, if you take that hadith to be true, is is a Hajj being canceled? Which like, hadith is that again? Like just see the full content. It. Yeah, is I'll it authentic? It. Is it like it's Sahih hadith? Yeah. Well, I'm a well, I'm a Quranist apologist, so you can't use that against me. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's got it covered. Yeah, yeah it's Abdullah. You don't have to look it up. It's okay. We all know. Okay. We all know that. But he's just being an apologist. I'm trying to see if, if I could find it. So yeah, yeah. one of the interesting things was actually I was like to, reading up on this. Um, people always question like, how did the Muslims, these Arabs in these 23 years, suddenly came from nowhere, rose up and destroyed the Persian Roman Empire? What I found was like around that era, there was a huge plague that affected Roman and Persian empires, and they were so weakened because of that. That's one of the reasons that allowed the Arabs to easily like trample over them in in a sense, because that plague had weakened them economically and militaristically in such a such an uh, insane way. So, and then also the same way with World War Two, if you notice, like you know the pandemic, the flu pandemic after World War, and then also the same way with World War Two, if you notice, like you know the pandemic the flu pandemic after world war one and then how germany and everything like suddenly the hitler guy comes around so it's kind of interesting seeing like how these pandemics can actually have a huge effect on like you know global uh, politics and whatnot isn't, isn't the rise of islam or i'm sorry if you mentioned this already but like the rise of islam right came uh yeah at, at during a phase of the plague, right? yep. I mean, wasn't there a plague? Because of it? the plague, Ali. Because of the plague. Yes. Because yes. this is why this this is because this is why it was a shocking thing for people at the time. Two empires. One was completely defeated by Islam, and Roman one Empire, was Persian Empire. Yeah, and yeah, and the, and the other one was defeated in so many battles. I mean, it was shocking. It wasn't just the plague. It was also the fact that the Persian Empire and the uh, Roman Empire, perfect combination uh, for for something to just fill the vacuum, almost mm. like a miracle, guys. <laughs> almost like a miracle. Almost as if God had planned and prepared the world for its <laughs> empire to rise. Well, actually, this is what's interesting. Now that I'm thinking about it, the Hundred Years' War in France uh, also had a person. Uh, like Joan of Arc to suddenly come from nowhere at the age of like the 17 year old teenage girl and just comes up, leads French army topples and set, plays such a pivotal role. Uh, but again, that was the same time when the bubonic plague was starting in Europe too. So it, it kind of, it's funny that when these big pandemics happen, these, these characters come about and they kind of start these revolutions, but that's understandable because economic, uh, recession and all that that follows kind of almost entails a new uprising with it. It's, it's interesting to see that. But like Ehrman said, it's like a sign. It's, it's like the economic uh, recession and all that that follows kind of almost entails a new uprising with it. It's, it's interesting to see that. But like Ehrman said, it's like a sign. It's, it's like, you know, Allah plans and he's the best of planners and you can't beat him. <laughs> He's the best of planners. Yeah, there is a there is a verse in the Quran that says, um, uh, "Lo, who is better than Allah at coloring?" And it's one of my favorite. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. That this is one of my favorite verses in the Quran, actually, because as it says, it's like you know we color the people, and it says, "Lo, who is better than Allah at coloring?" And that's it. I like just posting that to places and just oh, there is this there the, the weirdest context. one I find was uh, I was just reading this surah and I just suddenly come across this atraba, where Allah is describing the blessings in heaven and he suddenly says and for the believing men will be women with perky tits yeah, hold on. I yeah. missed this how do I not know that wait, wait, say, say there's that a verse again? in the Quran that talks about the boobs of the hoors and it says they're perky <laughs> Oh, does it use? Are there translations? No, so it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it, it translates that them as that firm is, breaths. That is a very tempting. Oh, yeah, yeah, firm breaths. I know about that. Like, I know the 
And then the, the hadith actually a qualify like they are there is a skin color thing. Like the, so first of all, it's not, when it comes to the virgins in heaven, the whores in heaven, and you know, this is a little bit of a tangent from coronavirus, but probably related because <laughs> all of this stuff is related in some way. Everything's so bizarre. But you're gonna die from the coronavirus, you're gonna go lay in the arms of the whores, you know. I mean I know, yeah. Well, landing we, ahead. <laughs> well, we called it the coronavirus, and that's what we do. Quarantine. But the the um there's a yeah the verse of uh, the verses about the the way the virgins are described in heaven the whores are first of all they're all wide eyed okay mm -hmm. they have wide eyes verses about the the way the virgins are described in heaven the whores are first of all they're all wide eyed okay mm -hmm. they have wide eyes that means that if you have an Asian fetish you're done okay the Wait, second thing but not if you have an anime fetish that's oh my <laughs> okay well that's we're not talking about that Asian thing yeah, yeah. the second thing is that it it talks about how fair they're going to be and in the hadith it actually elaborates this by saying that they will be so fair yeah so light skinned that they are going to be transparent as in you're going to be able to see their bone marrow <laughs> this is the hadith that they are going to be so fair skinned that you can see their bone marrow wait so and they have perky tits and you can't even see them no, no, you see, you see their, you can see through their skin. Because that's how, yeah, so you're not going to be able to there. see their glorious perky tits. Mm. If, if you're interested, the worst number is Surah 78, and it's the worst number 33. 78, 33? Okay, I'm going to check it out. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. God is, try, is talking to the Arab tribes at the time, and this is just symbolism for immense pleasure and the fires of hell. It's not going to be literal fire. There's not going to be literal honey and milk and puris there. This is just for, for people at that time to understand, understand that like what eternal bliss, whatever that is, this is just symbolism for all of that. Yeah. You just have to understand that. Yeah. You just have to understand what would the Arab and desert what would they see as the most as the greatest reward? This is as a the greatest pleasure. It's a mistranslation. The honey's honey and milk is a mistranslation. Great. If you look at the original Syro Aramaic roots of the Arabic classical Arabic words, it actually comes to bunnies and silk, right? And now that if you may draw parallels what to the Easter, hell? are you being? You're not being serious. Okay, never mind. I, mean, <laughs> I can't believe it. He actually, he actually, bought it. you really thought it was about bunnies and silk? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, okay. Nah. So what we were talking I'm gonna about. Give up on, uh, I'm never gonna take you seriously on anything ever again, Ali. Here, here okay. Armin's playing well, the apologist, right? So I'll I'll throw a, a question at him. Imagine, okay, great. Imagine there is this evil scientist, right? And mm -hmm. he was to create something. Oh, I hate a kid like this. I like this. <laughs> something like the virus we have right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm, and then he purposefully mm -hmm. infects the whole world, but then demands all the governments of the world to, to pay him large amounts of money and pledge him allegiance, and he has the cure to it. But then he's a psychopath, and he wants everybody to worship him. Did, what opinion of that person do you have? That's not at all analogous to the God situation. Not at all. I can't believe you even... So ridiculous. Okay, so the difference is that you worshiping the scientist doesn't. What opinion of that person do you have? That's not at all analogous to the God situation. Not at all. I can't believe you even. So ridiculous. Okay, so the difference is that you worshiping the scientist does nothing for you. Okay, does nothing for you. Worshiping God is the you getting close to God is the best thing you could wish for. This is just your arrogance and your ignorance of what it means to be close to God, okay? Closer, becoming to, close to God is the, is the highest reward. It's, it's eternal bliss. The people, the, the people who understand what being far away from God is, they fear that more than hell itself. That's a, this, is why, this is why God had to come up with the symbolism of hell and eternal punishment because people don't understand the misery and the pain associated with not being close to God. And this is why God had to come up with huris and virgins and all the blessings in heaven because people don't understand. It's not for God's sake, it's for your sake. <laughs>
<laughs> well, but if if you worship the scientists, he will like keep us alive and give us uh, provisions and stuff. <laughs> so that benefits yeah. us. But praying yeah, but, to God doesn't do but anything. But the scientist might need you for him. So God doesn't need you. God wants you to be happy. By this is a blessing to you. <laughs> you think that you think the miseries in this world is any is is bad. You think mm -hmm. like starvation is bad you think the coronavirus is bad you have no idea what misery is like if you understand what be being away from god is like none of this would even show up on your radar as misery god is trying to remind you that he exists by by putting inconveniences a little small inconveniences in your life so you're not attached to this world because this world is blinding you from the from what God is actually, the real thing that God is offering you for the real pleasure, for the real glory, for the real peace. And taking that away from you so that you're... The, this sounds like, the, like this creator of this weird psychological experiment. Yeah. <laughs> so what What are... Let's, let's, let's go on with this. So, you know, the coronavirus itself, I mean, the, so the, the prophet said, I mean, one good thing that, you know, stay at home. You know, he talked about social distancing and about, you know... Um, uh, lockdowns and things, I guess, lockdowns. Like, you know, if there's a pandemic, then stay at home, which is great. Okay, you said that. Um, what were some of the other suggestions uh, that have been given in Islamic theology about, uh, or I guess it would be the hadith mainly, mainly well, relating to plagues and relating to uh, infections and things like that? I mean, the, the thing was, one thing was very, very, very clear that these people had no clue about the germ theory of disease. I mean, Muhammad would give his superstitious ideas all the time, you know, like, like for example, recite the Fatiha seven times and then rub it on your body and it'll cure everything. Or like uh, he gives uh, a lot of superstitious ideas all the time, you know, like, like for example, recite the Fatiha seven times and then rub it on your body and it'll cure everything. Or like uh, he gives, uh, a lot of the times he'd attribute these things to magic, right? So he'd say, mm -hmm. recite the last two kuls. Or uh, there is this book that we used to have in Pakistan. It was a collection of select verses. Uh, I forgot what it's called. It's Panjasa or something like Panjpara mm -hmm. or some a few surahs and you'd recite these over and over and blow them on you and stuff. Uh, but then there's the other funny ones where uh, curing these with like black seed oil comes in. Like black seed oil is touted as the cure for everything except death. Uh, then there's uh, everything except death. I like that they qualified that. It's like, oh, yeah, by yeah. The way, just, in, you, just in case you think that this cures all disease, it doesn't cure death. Yeah. You qualified that. It's like, oh, yeah, by yeah. The way, just, in, you, just in case you think that this cures all disease, it doesn't cure death. Yeah, yeah it, it's from, specifically yeah, mentioned. Have that. But like with the honey as well, like the Quran would mention that. Then there's the, the fig, the olive oil. But the, the thing that, that steal the show. They're right that. about olive oil. Olive oil well, yeah. not for infections, but it just in terms of I think when it comes to uh, heart health and you know, it's got yeah. lots of omega-3 fatty acids and things like that. So, But yeah. a lot of things like it alludes to that what, what Muhammad propagated or was normally medicine or medical tips, you know, like you kind of hear from ancestors passed on a generation yeah. by generation. And there weren't anything unknown to the time. And they, some of them are just like, kind of bizarre. Like if you were to go take his advice on how to cure stomach problems like he did with suggesting people drink camel urine or uh, if a, a fly falls cure and yeah. the other has uh, the disease on it. So there are some very uh, interesting uh, ones there. So I, I just want to just contextualize that. Uh, well, I guess I, I, it may be illustrated visually for people. So the idea is that if there is a fly <laughs> right, what was it uh, in in your drink, right? Mm. Uh, and it just dips one wing and it flies away. Uh, then you'll need to go and pursue the fly, um, catch it, so that you can come back and dip. No, the other it's just wing like in. no, no. A fly. Okay, if the fly is on your <laughs> in, drink, in order to, yeah. you just dip it in. If it's well, you don't go catch a fly. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Patty, um, wait, 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 hold on. No, I, I want to hold on. No, no, I want this clear. So you have a fly. You find a fly in your drink, right? Right. So you don't know which one of its wing touched the water because every fly, according to this hadith, again, this is not Islam. According to touched the water. 
Because every fly, according to this hadith, again, this is not Islam according to my Quranist views, but again, this hadith, this ridiculous hadith says that every fly on, if, on each one of its wings, one of it, one of the wing has a poison on it, and the other wing has a cure to that poison on it. Mm -hmm. So if you have a drink and a fly is falls into your water and like it's on your water and you don't know you don't know which one of its wing had touched the water. So you just make sure you dip it fully in so that if the poison wing had touched the water, you also get the cure for the poison in that water so you but, don't die. But Armin, so this only <laughs> really applies if you have a fly that is has not completely yeah. um but both wings haven't. So you have to this this is a hadith for a very specific circumstance. It's actually quite I think I think it's quite visionary. Yeah, because, Islam, yeah, because there's no, that's that's hadith. We have hadith for very weird, very specific circumstances. No, I know. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. So, no, but this is stuff with a fly in your drink where both <laughs> wings are not touching it. It's just one wing. So you look at it, and then supposing it's one wing, it just skims it, right? Just kind of skims it. Sort Rick, of like, ricochets off, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a like you know like a like sometimes you know you know when you get when you skimming is not. It's not nothing. Skimming is a serious thing because I'll tell you something, right? You don't have to kick somebody in the balls to really, really hurt them. You just have to skim and that's it. And you're going to feel the pain. This, after skimming and grazing is a very, very... This, um, okay. This, my brothers and sisters, this is why... No, I'm very serious about this, Armin. I'm very serious. So, yeah. uh, hold on. Let me, let me so, so the fly goes in, it skims a wing, and it, but I, I am right, Armin, because the thing is, after that, if the fly does fly away, if mm -hmm. it just kind of touches one wing, flies away, you would actually have to pursue the fly and bring it back. And, no, and you just get like you can you, you just get another cup, okay? If the fly, and, no, and you can just get like you can you, you just get another cup, okay? If the fly, if you didn't get a chance to dip it fully in, you just. Get, go get a new cup, okay? So the but, phrase "double dip." People don't know, but "double dip" the phrase actually originated from from Islam. It's but this, one of Islam's contributions. Can, so I, respond to this? To this. can I respond double to this? Can I respond to this? Do I have permission from you, brother, to respond to this? This is why I only the, Allah gives permission, Armin. This is why. No, that's bullshit. Uh, this is why you Stop. go. The Quran is the full, the final, and full authority. Mm. And this is why you're encouraging Islam to use your own logic. Mm -hmm. And if a hadith doesn't is not in according to sound logic, and is if if it's not in the Quran and if it contradicts sound logic, you deny it, even if it's a he hadith. This is why this is why the Islamophobes like you guys are honest. But it's yeah. not. We I are if if anything is contradicts the Quran or if it contradicts it's your sound logic then you deny it even if it ha if even if it's sahih and a lot of these sahih hadiths that you guys point to have only one chain of narration okay and if they have one chain of narration you could easily dismiss them okay because it's very unlikely for something that muhammad have said and only one person have re been reporting them if it's, especially if it's something important okay mm -hmm. so please take these two into account if it do do not trust the sahih, if as do not trust the hadith, definitely if it's not author, if it's not sahih, ignore it. If he has one, even if it's sahih, if it has only one chain of narration, be very skeptical about it. But even if it's sahih, and even if it has multiple chain of narrations, if it's not according to the Quran, and if it doesn't pass the logic test, then you could also add it. But even if it's sahih, and even if it has multiple chain of narrations, if it's not according to the Quran. And if it doesn't pass the logic test, then you could also dismiss okay. it. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's move away. I know we can go come back to the hadith later, right? <laughs> and just remember hashtag both wings matter. But <laughs> wait, I do, but when you come back, <laughs> let's just move back and just zoom out and go to the Quran itself. Notice right? how so, they have nothing against my my points for you guys like I, I, yeah. No, no, that's because we accept it. We can't have anything. We want to keep our heads on our bodies. The, the <laughs> when um so in the Quran, right? For instance, in the Quran, as we know, is the completely preserved literal word of Allah as as Yasta Qadi recently pointed out in a podcast with uh, uh, in, a, in a talk with uh, Muhammad the Job, right, where it is it's like completely, completely preserved and it's unchanged. Um, 
But what does it say about experiencing right now with the coronavirus? Because you got to understand, over here, it's old news. Like, we're all in North America. Coronavirus is old news. Who cares? But in places like Pakistan, in a lot of these other countries, it's just picking up right now. Mm-hmm. In a lot of Muslim-majority countries, it's just picking up. So we need to provide guidance. They should learn from not only from our experience, but also from revelation. Mm-hmm. So what's your question? It's, so is there anything Quranic aside from the Hadith? Because you're obviously going to dismiss the Hadith um, right. because you're a Quranist. So is there anything in the Quran that we can talk about in terms of scientific claims? That, okay, let's just move on, move away from the coronavirus. Well, you're asking Abdullah this, right? I'm, I'm asking, yeah, I'm asking Abdullah. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I was yeah. asking Armin because he was the, playing the apologist. Um, in the I Quran, don't know per se, like, the, I... I don't see many like general good health very often. Um, there are uh, would be like abstinence from alcohol would be one thing that could be good. Um, some well, I might try to argue that uh, using one word since Surah Baqarah that smoking is uh, haram as well. So there are some things that are good in, Wait, in, in that sense. Smoking is haram or makru? Oh, some ulama in the Salafi side they do say it's also haram because. What happened was when the fatwas initially came out about smoking, it was just based off of the bad smell and it was being uh, analogous to garlic smell. But most but then, Muslims say it's macro. Yeah, that was because the initial fatwas were just about the smell of the smoke. But then later on, with more research, they found that smoking actually causes cancer. So then it becomes a problem of you know her, uh, purposefully harming yourself slowly. So then some ulama said that there's a verse in the Quran, don't kill yourself with your own hands. And that's why, you know, smoking or anything harmful in that sense is, is haram. That that argument too. Then there are some good ideas like, you know, usage of uh, olive oil, uh, fig. Um, yeah, they have a certain, uh, then milk and honey as well. Yeah. I, other than that, I don't know, maybe that's about it. Yeah, they do mention pomegranates and fruits in Jannah, but that's just just food stuff. (laughs) The stuff in Jannah is completely different because all the stuff that you're not you're supposed to stay away from here, Mm. like you know, alcohol, for instance, is just there's loads and loads of it in Jannah, right? So Mm -hmm. Jannah is heaven for people who don't know. But one thing, macro means okay. So macro means like it's discouraged, but it's not a sin. Forbidden, yeah. Forbidden. Mm. Haram means it's forbidden. Makru means it's discouraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I uh, so this is one thing that, that and I guess if Allah tell us when uh, when I was a kid, and I, it's forbidden. Makru means it's discouraged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I uh, so this is one thing that, that and I guess if Allah tell us when uh, when I was a kid and I used to hear about something that was makru, I was like. Oh, okay. Fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, you know, because like they're like, oh, you know, Allah, this isn't haram. It's not going to count. It's not going to send you to hell. But it, you know, it, it's not. You shouldn't do it. Try not to do it. And I was like, well, that's like when they tell you something is optional. You know, if I want to do it, I'll do it. Then it doesn't matter. I remember they used to say it that matters that. because they're telling you that this is if this is a good. It's just good advice for your sake. Because Islam cares about you, it's not just you know wants to have wants you to have a better life. But yeah, I know. But look, if someone is telling you if there's a word to talk about, when I was in Islam, I was thinking about heaven and hell. It's like, is this a? It was sawab, right? Thawab. I don't know how you pronounce it. (laughs) Uh, Haram, and then there was makru, right? So makru was like the purgatory between the two. So something was rewarded. You know, you do it more. It's going to help you get to heaven. Like, this is basic math. If something is not, it's, it's considered haram, it's going to send you towards hell. You just, just stay the fuck away from it as much as you can. But if something's makru and it's in the middle, it's like, oh, this isn't really going to take you anywhere. It's, it's like, okay, I'll, with, I'll do it. With makru, there's like different var- uh, degrees as well. Like there's this one, oh, I think God. makru with the harimi and stuff. And then there's... There's so there's the big makru, which is very close to being almost haram, forbidden, and then there's a slightly disliked makru. So there's like a whole spectrum. In Who gives a shit? Like it doesn't matter. Okay, so here, yeah, yeah. but here's, to not, be honest, here's another haram. thing. Here's another thing. It. When when something is 
Well, Ali, but here's another thing. When people, when, when the scholars or the imams, scholars or the imams decide something is makru, they could be fallible. So some Muslims might decide like, you know what, if it's makru, um, it has a potential of actually being haram, being a sin. So mm. just to be safe, we're going to avoid the makru things as well because we cannot be sure if the scholars got it right. So some Muslims would want to know what's macro just to make sure they avoid those as well. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. one interesting example that my parents used to give me, and I've remembered this for it was shrimps. In the Hanafi madhab, apparently shrimps or eating shrimps is makru. But in other ones, it's not because the argument was that shrimps, uh, they're not part of the, I think it's crustacean family or something, or no. they're not part of the fish family. <clears throat> I don't know what the reasoning Imam of Anifa came up with, but we were told that don't eat the shrimp. They're disliked, but like I'm like, I'm going to still eat it. Who cares, mm -hmm. right? But that's just one family or something, or mm -hmm. they're not part of the fish family. <clears throat> I don't know what the reasoning Imam of Anifa came up with, but we were told that don't eat the shrimp. They're disliked, but like I'm like, I'm going to still eat it. Who cares, mm -hmm. right? But that's just one thing that came into my mind. And then the other one, like Makru, would be also divorce. Like divorce is allowed, but it's still disliked, right? So it's it's a very interesting idea, and that there's so much differences between different scholars, and what is makru to one person might not be to another. To another one, might just be straight up haram, right? So. See, this is the beauty of Islam because it's not like <laughs> like it's not binary, like other. It's not that simple of like good haram halal, yeah. right? Islam recognizes the it's nuance. Seventy two different. It's it's like a non-binary. Yeah. Islam <laughs> recognizes the nuance <laughs> and how different actions could be, it's you know, mean different thing for different people, right? You have to acknowledge that this is this is God's complete religion mm. but by the way by the way at some <laughs> point can I, can I, at some point can i respond to myself given how much you two are <laughs> no, failing no, to... no, this is too good. You respond to and here's Ar Arma, this is what it's like the reason that we don't respond to you apologists brother sometimes is you know for instance if i'm doing an interview with uh vladimir putin okay i'm going to ask him i'm going to grill and i'm going to say i'm going to try to uh really really challenge him on the questions and catch him out but if I'm interviewing somebody who's coming and telling me there's a big invisible bunny in their backyard that is telling them to, you know, just uh, drink lots of, uh, I don't know, meal supplements or something, like whatever this large invisible bunny is telling them, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, yeah, well, show me evidence of the bunny. I'll just be like, so what does this bunny tell you? This is, oh, you guys, okay. this is what ex-Muslims yes, do. I want to they... a little bit more about it. That's how you approach this is like this that. is so this so this so stereotypical ex Muslim because we can't... Yeah, humor is the most mature defense mechanism. I just want to say I I feel this is amazing. Like we have so I just want to say Abdullah, uh, we actually have one of the most knowledgeable sort of young ex Muslims here on the show. It's yes. Basically, we just called this guy who goes. He does these, and Susanna saying that he does these deep dives and dissections into Islamic literature, into theology. He just absolutely knows, um, has a treasure trove of knowledge about Islamic history. And then we're sitting here talking about wings and flies. We basically <laughs> called you here and we're, oh my God. It's like, uh, it's like calling Einstein on an interview and just talking about fart jokes. You know, it's like, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think I'm anywhere near Einstein. That's too much uh, of a compliment. <laughs> no, but go check out Abdullah's Twitter account because um, you go deep into these things on your Twitter. What's your? Uh, and we are going to have you back on to go about uh, have you back on to go about uh, Quranus revision, Quran revisions and stuff like that, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So some more deep stuff. But what is your Twitter account? Uh, well, you can just Google my name, Gondol, and but normally I, I just started using Twitter like about two months ago, seriously. But mostly, most of my work is on, uh, like I, I write on Facebook. But I have done a lot of videos with Abdullah Samir, you guys as well. I think it's the third one uh, with uh, uh, Pakistani Mulhid Haris Sultan in Urdu as well. So, and that's where mostly you'll find my content. Uh, but for the deep dive, like you guys are saying with the Quran thing, like recently, just to give a very brief synopsis, is uh, 
Yasser Qadi came out with a stream and he basically straight up admitted that the Muslim narrative about the Quranic preservation that is preserved uh, letter by letter and whatnot is completely, well, it has Quranic preservation that is preserved uh, letter by letter and whatnot is completely, well, it has holes in it. And this has kind of thrown the whole Muslim Twitter, Facebook, that was seen into turmoil at this point where um, when he said that, Muhammad Hijab, a popular YouTuber, asked him the question in return, if I give you a blank Quran, would you be able to reproduce the Quran we have now? And he said it's not an easy answer. <laughs> Straight up yeah. said that to him. He's and, right. Yeah. yeah. And right. because of this controversy, this actually started in 2016 when this one YouTuber leaked these emails from Yasser Khali's personal scholarly discussion group to expose him for having these weird, unorthodox views on his uh, Quranic preservation. And now what's happened is, uh, so I started posting about this on Twitter and a bunch of academics, which I was surprised, like I was, and a bunch of academics, which I was surprised, like I was, but I appreciate that they're engaging, like Dr. Marjin Van Putin and a few other big, big names, leading authorities in the field of uh, this. They have completely, bluntly, clearly said that uh, the Quran is traceable back uh, to Uthman with a certain degree of surety, but anything beyond that is an article of faith. and. The concept of the uh, the letter the letter dot by dot preservation, the Quran is false. It's not miraculously preserved, right? So that's what's been going on recently, and uh, there's a lot of problems because the the, the the way the Dawah scene is, a lot of people are now starting to say that Yasser Qadi is a deviant, mm -hmm. right? And he sits on the, uh, the 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 top, the the pedestal of like you know the north. Yeah, Yasser Qadi is a for those who don't know, he's a world-renowned uh, sort of Islamic scholar. Yeah. But, but he's also not a, a he, he's not really a deviant because within uh, an alien concept. Oh no! Is it like the idea no, no, that no. They're, the, what what are they called the ahraf or ahruf and the the, 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 uh, the thing is so the, the problem is like Muslim scholarship has been aware of this from the beginning of Islam, right? They've written books about and whatnot. But the issue arises that the layman does not know about this. And Guys, let's not get too deep into this because we want person. to make sure that we have a have another episode on this fully. So yeah, let's so, just tease people with it a little bit, but then okay, we okay. get back. Yeah, 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 this episode basically this is for your listening pleasure, since you know you guys are just having fun out there, and we've got Abdullah. Gun. Think of this as like the training training bra training. We'll do like a training whole presentation wheel. on it. We'll go through like a bunch of books and stuff with Fifi. Yeah. yeah. But just to give a quick, quick tour of thing that the, the, the Quran's preservation has variations at every step of the way, right? From Muhammad canceling verses and, and even after that, we have textual variants that do affect the meaning, right? So, yeah. The, the, the argument isn't that the Quran, the Quran is, I will say, relatively very well preserved past the point of Uthman, mm -hmm. but beyond, before that, it's a mess. Okay, we're giving people too much. Yeah. I mean, this needs anyway. to be a teaser. We don't need to give them yeah, too much. We'll go yeah. into that uh, uh, yeah. a deep dive later have, on. Yeah. By the way, are you are you looking into this whole new uh, shitstorm of whether Muhammad was even real or not? Are you looking into any of that stuff? I have looked into it and the, like the academic arguments surrounding that, like the academia doesn't take the Petra theory seriously. Like, like Sean Anthony and big names will try to tell you it's uh, Dan Gibson's theory is silly in, in that sense. Let's bring that up. Named, man let's named Muhammad did exist, but the, what we mm. were given, like the reports you were given about him mm. have been convoluted. Man let's named Muhammad did exist, but the what we mm. were given, like the reports you were given about him, mm. have been convoluted with a lot of you know politics and civil civil wars in the early two hundred years of Islamic history, and that created this this weird mythical figure almost, and that people use for their political gains. Okay, so give, given that we go off track from the main topic, and I want to just bring before you go because we're getting close. Uh, before we get to Patreon questions, I want to bring us back to the topic because you guys both failed to respond to my arguments. I'm going to do it myself um, really quickly regarding coronavirus and why that's not even 
there's nothing wrong with God sending us. First of all, people have to understand there is no room for in Islam. There's no room for suggesting like some Christians do that. Oh, maybe coronavirus is from the devil. You might go find like a, one fringe Muslim in the corner or somewhere. we like, like, oh, look, I found a Muslim that says something else. This is almost unanimously agreed by Muslims. You guys tell me if you agree that every single atom and even subatomic particles move because God wills it. There is no room for, no, God didn't do this. Somebody else did this. God wills everything that happens is because of God, right? It's it's mm. actually funny because there's a part in the Quran, I think Surah four, verses seventy-eight to eighty-two, where well, in, in a succession of verses, one place Allah says, "Anything and everything bad or good that happens to you is from Allah." But then the next verse, like, "The bad things that happen to you are from Satan, but the good things are for only from Allah," right? Yeah, but but like, but, but, but I'm is, saying. But the Muslim understanding is that Satan is also a creation of Allah and all of that. So yeah, 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 Allah and all of that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, like, cause Satan does have causative powers in Islamic theology, where he can whisper things into you, be running inside your blood, cause divorces and stuff. But if you bring it back to God, then it becomes like, well, if everything. God yeah. allows it to then evil is by essence. Yeah, so but Muslims don't dispute state. this. Mus Muslims don't dispute it. This is except like even when even when the devil is doing great uh, evil things, um, that is part of God's plans because God is the great. You know, yeah, the devil is deceiving, but God is the greatest deceiver of all. And <laughs> even though there's evil, that's part of God's great plan. But I'm just saying, like that's just one thing I want to touch on because. To just mention, like, if there is coronavirus and there is disease or cancer or something, there is no Muslim that will come and say God's great plan. But I'm just saying, like, that's just one thing I want to touch on because to just mention, like, if there is coronavirus and there is disease or cancer or something, there is no Muslim that will come and say that that is not God, that wasn't God's plan. Okay. Like, I know we have some disagreements in Christianity and Judaism, but in Islam, Pretty much everybody, like, yeah, that is part of God's plan, right? Um, so coronavirus is, for example, coming from God. So we know that, uh, according to Muslims. Mm -hmm. But so, but the thing is that how, when people's faith, like, we do have a lot of, even though I don't think coronavirus was the worst thing, even close to the worst thing that happened, um, but there was, because it was covered so much, um, it did make a lot of Muslims question their religion and why would God do these things. And there was a huge response from Islamic sources to try to respond to all these. You know, if you're experiencing any amount of misery and that brings you closer to God and you use it as an opportunity to get closer to God and bring humanity closer to God and humble, humble humanity to realize that they're not in control, God sometimes needs to remind humans that they're not in control. They do not like all this technology and all this science. All, they get arrogant. It's kind of like building the tower and then God striking it down because it reminds you to put you back in your place to remember who's actually in control, right? And also, not just coronavirus, any personal misery, the, anything that you experience, if that makes you closer to God, that's a net win for you, right? You experience because this life, this dunya, this. Uh, is so is nothing compared to the eternal life that you're going to have after death uh, any mis any inconveniences that you have any pain any disease any that you experience if the result of that is in any disease any that you experience if the result of that is you being close to god the, that is infinite times more rewarding than you know it's a net benefit for you okay so that's why that's the explanation. And to be fair, they would be right. That's the problem. This is why you guys can't challenge me on this. They would be right if there if there was a law. Yeah. There's no way to challenge any of these things. It's because just a lot if of they're, internally if they're, consistent logic, yes. Yeah, it's internally consistent. If their Allah is real, then everything they're saying makes sense. The problem is 
that there is no Allah, right? There is no God. Thing, if 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 that if we accept them, then we also imply that Allah as a God is quite like angry, vindictive, jealous, and all that too, right? Because yeah, he's like sending the- to remind you it's for your sake but this again I'm, this i'm going to use this whole thing for my plug this is why the argument why the main argument you need to make to people is why there is no god <laughs> which i published the book in I that name this all uh, advertisements <laughs> this, is, this, this, whole pod, <laughs> this whole episode has just been an excuse for me to market to promote my book why there is no god go buy it it's very cheap and if you can't afford it email atheist republic and we'll send you a free pdf copy it's basically I actually read it yeah the, the yeah, first the... month i left islam i read that book <laughs> oh actually, yeah good. yeah it's very poignant and the questions are it's it's like those hard-hitting questions that everybody asks and it's very brief and concise and yeah it's very yeah, it's, I, that's why i love it too. Atheist, yeah it's a great starter thing, especially for somebody who's new to it. It's just an amazing way, and especially when you're having conversations, you're having arguments with other people about it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, other people about it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Armin's book is great. And, and you know, the having a relationship with Allah is sort of like, you know, having a master slave BDSM thing without a safe word. <laughs> exactly. right? Hey, everybody yeah. loves BDSM. I'll beat you and whip you once in a everybody? while as long as you <laughs> everybody loves BDSM. I I'm refuse dumb. to I refuse to believe people who say that they're not into BDSM. Oh my god. They're just too, they're just ashamed of it. <laughs> I think that this, this is a thing with sexual deviants. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean kind of, they just assume that everybody else is kinks too, right? Like he would like his behavior is like he first had like with 11 wives and on top of that he'd have like sex slaves and on top of that he'd keep married he got married to this little girl who he would make scratch uh, his semen off of his clothes and all sorts of bizarre stuff right like he's quite a playboy in of his time actually if you count the number of women he's been with like what 20 plus men. Jesus Christ. He would make scratch uh, his semen off of his clothes and all sorts of bizarre stuff, right? Like, he's quite a playboy in of his time, actually. If you count the number of women he's been with, like, what? 20 plus men. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. it was. I just wonder. The only thing I don't know is whether he uh, actually uh, was, uh, he really did kill himself in his cell or whether he was murdered by the Clintons or maybe even the Trumps. I, I have no idea. Oh wait, who are we talking about? Muhammad. Uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, what, what are you going to? All right, let's do, before you know Abdullah has to go to sleep. So really quickly, go some just a few questions. Maybe. All right. Okay. Let's questions. do that. And by the way, I just want to say that yes, we had Abdullah. This, this was like this is, I, I absolutely love this. This is a lot of fun. But this again is a a. a, a training thing we're going to have him on for a longer time i'm going to find a time that is not uh before he, you know the, the where he has one of the first times on the internet this idea that the quran is not preserved in the form that it was revealed and there are the most renowned scholars of islam themselves um or you know th their ideas about this are actually coming out as well so i i really can't wait for that i think that let's book that up below whenever we get the chance i'll oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, um but in the meantime, let's take some patron questions. All right, patrons, what's going on? Uh, the first question is Abdullah, are you? Oh, should I give you the timestamps? You want to hold it up, Ar Armin? Or okay, okay, yeah. So the first question is from Secular Proton. <laughs> and... That's a nice name, Secular Proton. Welcome to our audience, Abdullah. Like uh -huh. just, yeah. Yeah, secular proton. I mean, well, it, it's, it's it's you know, it's not Muhammad the job, but um, <laughs> he's saying is Abdullah a Hafiz? Uh, no, I'm not. But I have led the uh, Salah big congregations and Tarawi Salah as well, up to 200, 300 people. So mm -hmm. that's great. Like I actually, you know, this is something I haven't talked about before. You should but tell I people what Hafiz is, maybe to because we have a global audience. Not everybody. Yeah, so Hafiz is a person who memorizes the Quran in it in from the beginning to end, word to word, letter to letter, uh, mm -hmm. from memory. So if you can start reciting, you can open the book and randomly start reciting from a page. The Hafiz will quickly catch on where you're reciting, and you can take it on from memory. So the point is that if you were to 
erase all the Qurans from the world today and you put a bunch of these Hafiz people in the room, they'll be able to reproduce the exact book from memory because they memorize literally uh, cover to cover. Most so, of the Hafiz I have met, um, and I don't, this is not at all. Book from memory because they memorize literally uh, cover to cover. Most so, of the Hafiz I have met, um, and I don't, this is not at all cyclical or scientific. This is just my personal experience. So, but um, I have no idea. Most of the Hafiz I've met have no fucking idea what they're, what they're reciting, the meaning of what they're reciting. But I don't, is that your experience as well? Yeah. So mostly, especially in the, in the non-Muslim majority, uh, non-Arab Muslim uh, countries mm -hmm. like Pakistan, Bangladesh, these kind of places, they basically know how to read the Arabic, but mostly have absolutely no clue no. what is being said at all. So what ends up happening, this is quite funny, this happened because there was an Arab scholar from Kuwait at a function, in, this Kirat function actually, in Pakistan in a competition as a judge. And he asks this Hafiz guy to recite this Quran on stage, and he does it. And everybody goes, subhanAllah, God bless you, putting rods into people's skin and then putting oil on their head to burn and torture them, right? So it's not beautiful what you guys are saying. Yeah. So this happens a lot in Pakistan where they have no clue what's being recited. And, it's and just a big quick... Oh, go on. Uh, I think, you know, that, that concludes the point. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? Just to be clear to people, the 80% of the Muslim population is not Arabic, right? Um, so... And imagine if if even people who have spent all their time memorizing the entire Quran, if they don't know what they're reading, what do you think? How what what does that say about the average Muslim? Hafiz are very rare, very rare. Yeah, right? Like yeah. they, they're seen as miracles, right? So if the Hafiz don't knows, doesn't know what he's reading, what does that say about the average Muslim and how much they know about what's in the Quran? I yeah. actually I will actually tell you that the Arab Hafiz sometimes don't know even what Arab Hafiz sometimes don't know even what they're reading uh, because it's just like a recitation. You're not actually paying attention mm -hmm. to what you're reciting, even if you're speaking Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay. yeah, okay, go on. Ali. Next question, 1119 from uh, Susanna um, is uh, 1119. What is Gondol's favorite silly verse, hadith, or conspiracy? Oof. Um, for one hadith that takes the cake for me each time is when Muhammad used to receive the revelations, he would fall on the ground, tremble, and snort like a baby camel. And Omar would be sitting there, and he'd be like, hey, people, come, you want to see Muhammad receive the revelations? We'd lift the corner of the, the blanket or whatever. People would little, come look at Muhammad. Uh, that one, very interesting. <laughs> he was having... Seizures, though, right? Wasn't he having? Oh like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, actually, we'd lift the corner of the the blanket or whatever. People would little come look at Muhammad. Uh, that one very interesting. <laughs> he was having yeah. seizures, though, right? Wasn't he having? Oh like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, actually, recently I did this deep, deep presentation, about almost three hours long, on the neuroscience of Muhammad. And uh, no, yeah, the guy was firm in my uh, opinion. Uh, he most likely, most probably had temporal epilepsy or partial epilepsy, complex epilepsy, seizures. Yeah. yeah, it's too, the evidence is too strong. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it's a very completely different topic. Uh, well, yeah, that hadith really was like, whoa, like, I mean, that's like, come on. <laughs> I mean, the monkey stoning one is the most crazy one to me. Actually, oh, yeah, I don't know if the monkey crazy. stoning was the craziest one or the Moses running, codes being, running <laughs> away, from, running after a stone because the, the stone stole his clothes. Chasing after a rock, number two, is the monkey stoning another monkey because the monkey isn't committed the, adultery. Isn't the that is the want something like that beating up a rock also in the Bible? No. I don't know. I know. I know that Moses hitting the rock with his shaft and twelve water springs coming up. That's uh -huh. that is. No, that's a different. Story. Yes. Different this story. one is like. This one is like. Apparently, Moses was always covering himself when he went and had you know bath with other people, and people were like, "Why doesn't he get naked in front of us? He probably has a horrible disease that is he's hiding." And God was like, 
this no moses is perfect i have to show people that moses has a perfect body <laughs> so he had that rock steal moses's clothes and clothes just start running naked running after the rock and telling the rock to give him back his clothes and people looked at Moses running naked and were like, oh my God, look, he has a perfect fuck. You know, he's hot and he hit it so hard. Apparently he's so strong that up until today, you could still see the marks on, of the, rock. Moses on the rock. That's how, that's how. Oh, so this is this, actually in the Old Testament. Um, in the Old Testament? No way. The rock? No. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's an Exodus. The rock story? Uh, oh, wow. No, no It's a, a little different. It's about him hitting a rock and the Lord said to Moses, Pass yes, on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel. That's a different wrong. story, Ali. Did you even hear what I said? <laughs> I did. But wherewith thou smotest the river, take thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand with thee there in the rock and Herod, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of Elkin. Okay, okay. That, yeah, that's, that's the water. That's a really different out. story. Yeah, that one's in the Quran, too, actually. The Quran did copy it that is, one. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that this is, for some reason, Really, I'm gonna ask Seth Andrews about it. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up. These scriptures are so easy to get mixed up. Yeah. And the thing is, they're all so full of these bizarre things. But if you say that one came from the other one and it didn't, they and it didn't, they will <laughs> descend on you like, oh, like crucify you. Yeah. Like yeah. a bunch of rocks. I yeah. mean, if you know their <laughs> style, like I would know. I know this is something. Okay, so what you just mentioned, Ali, I would have never believed that this is in the Old Testament. If you say it was in the Talmud, I would be like, maybe, but not in the Old Testament. So, I mean, sometimes you just know the level of crazy each one of them. The, the, right. the brands of crazy is different. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So, uh, 1127, also from Susanna, saying, how is Gondal hoping to expand his work going forward? What is the what is he, is he most passionate about? um i might start my own youtube channel i don't know yet i'm still debating it i i'm still debating like should i get more involved in the polemics and stuff or should i start distancing myself and focus more on other things because you know there's only so much you can talk about islam right after a while it it it, uh, mm. it dries up there's uh while it it, it, uh, mm. it dries up there's uh but then again like uh should I? There's a couple of different things. Like we are thinking of starting a call-in show, like a completely different format and different from like live streams. Like like Harris does. Yeah. So we're just job, trying yeah. to start that in English. So uh, as for my passion, I'm very passionate about like neuroscience and stuff. I might want to study. I like the anthropology side of religion as well. Yes. So yes. I might like to study that or read some books on that. Uh, mm -hmm. But definitely, my my passion is definitely neuroscience, uh, philosophy, cosmology, and whatnot. Uh, but uh, like I we said, if I do, you on the Islam side, that's yeah. when you we need you on that. Like that's why there's I, enough, I said there's I'll enough to... neurologists out there. What you're doing, there's not that enough people doing what you're doing when it comes to Islam. I, yeah. I want to make a channel, but I, I don't want it getting limited to, let's say, just discussing Islam, Islam, Islam. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a, a variety yeah. of things, like not just Islam, but different religions and different extinct anthropological religions that people have no clue about or well, stuff about science and, you know, stuff like can that. Can I, yeah. well, you know, you could use you... it. You could, wait, Ali. Yeah. You could use Islam as an excuse to get to another religions because Islam trying to trace where islam got its different ideas from is actually a very very interesting and fascinating hunt and it gets you into the Hel hellenism and it gets you into it's um you know christianity judaism it's so that's fast paganism you know and then once you go to judaism then you want to be like where well where did these ideas come from it's just that that you know hunt for the sources of these ideas just branches into so many different oh, yeah. places yeah oh yeah you can totally see like uh, how like them. for example allah's throne floating above the water before the universe mm, was yeah. such a um, popular narrative that was used so many times and you could get into so many ancient religions that constantly use this yeah and, exactly. you know so yeah yeah mm. so even if you focus on the exam angle you could use it as an excuse to get into so many other places right oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Abdullah, I have a question for you too. Uh, just really quick, what are you interested in aside from religion? Is there anything else that you're interested in uh, that oh, you want to talk about? But lot, lots of things. Uh, I mean, I find uh, that you feel particularly compelled to talk about, but you know, you don't really have a forum to talk about it. 
Well, like there are things like I love talking about neuroscience, religion, the sci uh, the psychology of religion, as in from there's a subfield called neurotheology that mm -hmm. interests me a lot. But generally, like um, my interest range anything from reading books on quantum mechanics to talking about uh, a history of let's say interest range anything from reading books on quantum mechanics to talking about uh, a history of let's say world war ii or stuff like that but i do like to uh, one thing like uh, anthropology i feel an anthropological lens is very important i feel like i have an audience that wants to listen to me talk about islam but I would love to talk about religion from a very multifaceted approach mm. and in a way that's not done before. Like, I, like one example would be my presentation on the neuroscience of Muhammad. Like, apply right. these really new perspectives onto religion and, uh, and, and see what we can actually learn about. Like, that's something that, like... I don't know if the neuroscience of Muhammad makes sense, but given that we know 99% of everything we know about Muhammad seems to be made up. So can you, it's not going to be an accurate, I mean, you could make, come up with theories about the people that came up with the stories about Muhammad, but I mean, given that we know that the stories are made up, it doesn't really tell you much about I, and yeah. Well, the you thing, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, for, for me, the thing is that the, the, the descriptions of him receiving revelation in regards to that are so precise to the symptoms we see in modern day neurology. And like exactly. if you go to my presentation, it is in incredibly precise where they have the exact same hallucination. Like for mm -hmm. example, I show like it's the St. Brigida's example. There's a couple of examples where the people would hear ringing bell noises followed by a voice talking to them in a commanding way. So exact things Muhammad experienced. Like there, there is no reason for me to believe that the Muslim scholars of that time actually concocted these symptoms just sitting with there. Because these symptoms don't make Muhammad look good. Yeah. So what I feel um, happened was these people might have actually recorded the symptoms no. in their own sincerity, thinking they're recording the miracle of Allah happening, that is the descent of revelation. But in so, actuality, they just recorded the symptoms. Okay, blood. but but okay, nobody serious is suggesting that the alternative to Muhammad's stories being fake is that the scholars just sat around and came up with the stories. Mm -hmm. The alternative is that there were many other stories that, that were floating around and they were all um, accumulated into one person, you know, different heroes, different archetypes. And mm. maybe the reason why some of these are familiar is because some of them ba were based on real experiences of some other people having, you know, thinking experiences of some other people having, you know, thinking that they're getting messages from divine, but it wasn't like this whole, a whole bunch of people that went and sat in a room and like, hey, let's create Islam together. And they just made, wrote the story. Um, they, it's a collection of popular stories that were already existing and they just canonized it. Um, mm -hmm. And this, this, ex, this also explains the explanation of why some of the stories of Muhammad that are so embarrassing are still there is two. One, so one is because a lot of the things that we consider embarrassing was not really that embarrassing for the people at that time. Uh, but also the ones that are actually are even embarrassing for even for those standards were because there were stories that were too popular not to in, in, include. Like they were already circulating. There were already stories about local heroes. Um, and maybe people were, you know, like, for example, sometimes you have local heroes that is just, Everybody just everybody keeps associating any good story that people come up with with this one name that is becoming a popular, um, mm. you know, container yeah. for all the heroism, right? And Muhammad might have been during the uh, Umayyad time, maybe that might have been like something like that, just a local hero figure that everybody just dumped their stories there. Mm. And at some point, when the government decided to you know, let's just make this into a religion. They had to make this official. They had to come up with a canonization pro um, process. They had to come up with a way to like get rid of shit that is they don't like and include things that they like. And actually, that's a, a much more effective strategy of because we have a lot of examples of people that um, wanted to make their own self a holy person, 
um, and tell you like, hey, we should lead you because I'm fucking holy. And those fail more often than <laughs> what we're representing yeah. that guy. That's always a more effective strategy because you you don't have to prove give people miracles. People are like if you're sent from God, then how come this? How come there's less questions? Mm. Um, and this is what the this is what um, what's his name the Khalifa Malik did right? Yeah, and I, th- I think yeah. Mm. So, anyways, Guys, we have to like because I know the last to go, so we're not going to get too much into this. I just have to sorry cut you off. Um, yeah, but yeah, Hassan is asking you about your position on uh, oh sorry, yeah, let me bring it up. this. Because it's so, about the okay. Good. I no, I'm gonna read it. Mahmoud has sent Mahmoud has sent saying, "Can Armin please elaborate his position a bit in regards to the recent anti-racism movement?" I read a few of his Facebook posts, but I got rather confused. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not gonna do that here, but we I am doing that on Atheist Republic channel, and I'm gonna do more of those videos. So uh, if you want to see that, go over there. Um, an atheist republic. Uh, we're gonna do more of those videos. So uh, if you want to see that, go over there. Um, an atheist republic. Uh, we are. I'm, I'm also gonna invite Ali's position is different from me on all, a lot of these stuff. So I'm gonna invite Ali on atheist republic to have a discussion mm. with me on it, where I will destroy him live in front of all you guys. It's gonna be. You're gonna have to call. Anyways, never mind. Yep. Right. <laughs> Armin will destroy uh, me, and then history is going to destroy Armin. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, sure, sure. the uh, next uh, question. Uh, so let's just do one more because I know I've okay. got to go. I'm sorry. I keep on. No, no in. problem. Let's um, okay. Well, actually, there isn't really much. No, yeah, secular okay. patron. Secular 11:30. proton. 11, no, 1130 T. Budiman. We already had one from uh, Secular Proton. Uh-huh. Uh, what is the Hajj? What is its importance for the Muslim? Do you think it'll be canceled this year? Has it been canceled before? So the Hajj, I'll just really quickly, Hajj is the annual pilgrimage to Mecca that all Muslims, it's one of the five. Would end up being canceled. And this has been, this has happened before. It's not an anomaly where there yeah. have been pandemics before. You're saying that it will be canceled? It probably will be canceled. And keeping in mind that the second wave is going to come and in Muslim countries like Pakistan, it's just starting to go up. Right. And it's too risky with the the amount of people that show up there, like what twenty million or something. I don't know. From even all remember. over the world, yeah. Yeah, it's this is like a it's literally like a tie it's like a nuclear corona bomb almost at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but uh, yeah, it's been cancelled before. I think it's responsible for yeah, them. Yeah, I think three yeah. times. Three times three, has been cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a few of them was in response to diseases as well. One of them yeah. at least was in response to a war. I think. Mm-hmm. Well, Kaaba has been destroyed like three, four times. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, Secular uh, Proton is trying to ask a question. Apparently, YouTube is not letting him or her ask it mm-hmm. because it's about COVID nineteen and because it's, it's about COVID nineteen and I don't know. It's not. It's just not, his question is not going through. So weird. Sorry about that, Secular Proton. We don't have control over that. Okay. Uh, that's um, weird. We'll do that. Hey, by the way, you know, you said the Petra thing is thought of as, as silly, the Dan Gibson thing, mm-hmm. by a lot of the scholarship. Is that does that apply only to the Dan Gibson Petra thing, or does that also apply overall to the location in the in see, the, like there is this jaws or yeah, there is problems with the basic narrative where the mosques do point to not Mecca, like they do point north, but then again, like. Generally, th- like I, this was, I think, top of my head. If I remember, Sean Anthony. Like, don't mm-hmm. quote me on this, but he's a professor as well, and a couple of other professors of Islamic studies. I think one was was it Juan Cole? I'm not sure. University of Michigan. I remember reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally, they keep saying that it's a lot of cherry picked evidence, and uh, it's a lot of cherry picked evidence, and uh, it's. They don't entertain it with a lot of seriousness. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, I on my own, my own haven't looked too much into the theory. Like I've seen that Dan Gibson documentary, the one-hour video he made, where he shows a stone yeah. that were thrown by the caliph, and they still have those, and how the descriptions match Petra yeah. and how the Hadith say there's gardens, but the Mecca doesn't have any gardens. Oh yeah, but, I mean, there's loads and loads no. of it. Uh, Discrepancies, all the yeah. But, yeah, but, uh, but but even even if it's not Petra, the whole idea that it's not Mecca was 
was taken seriously way before this whole picture yeah, was that, introduced. Yeah, Mecca is itself, because it has no evidence, there's no archaeological evidence behind before, what, the 8th century that Mecca even existed, right? That's the problem. Right. And it's off right. of trade routes and whatnot, so... So we know we know that it's very, like, the whole Mecca thing seems to be nonsense. Where it what actually was is debated, but most of the suggestions routes and whatnot, so... So we know we know that it's very like the whole Mecca thing seems to be nonsense. Where it what actually was is debated, but most of the suggestions, even before Petra, seems to be around that area. Yeah, it's definitely around yeah. the Middle Eastern area, right? Like the, the not middle, not just Middle Eastern, like specifically around the Jordan, you know, yeah. north. Yeah, north. Yeah, way north. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Good. okay. All right, guys, uh, Abdullah Gondal, um, thank you for coming on. And I can't wait till we have our proper thing on. Uh, on, on the Yasser Qadi, the, uh, the preservation. Yeah, the, 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 yeah that, that's going to be. That's yeah. going to be wild. So, I mean, it's uh, really interesting. I think I've always said one of our biggest arguments against the whole reform thing is that instead of reinterpreting scripture, which is com just sounds comical a lot of times, mm -hmm. and um, it's not convincing at all to the mm -hmm. people who need the convincing the most. The argument really to go by is to challenge the infallibility. Well, I'll, is... I'll give you like a brief this is why this is such a huge problem, right? Because the Quran is the literal, literal speech of Allah. And in the Salafi view, Allah would speak the Quran, Gabriel would hear the Quran and then bring it down to Muhammad, right? And then there's the idea that in heaven, there's this tablet which has... <laughs> The mother. Uh, fine, the mother of the book, the final copy of the Quran, which should correspond with the copy we have now. Mm. Now, what ends up happening is there's a concept of abrogations. So, like these verses are revealed and it get canceled. Now, one asks if this is the eternal speech of Allah, mm -hmm. but then they get canceled. Are these verses still part of that tablet that contains the eternal speech? Of in heaven or not or, or do they unbecome the speech of Allah but that goes back to the argument is the Quran a created thing or is it an eternal Un, thing right uncreated uncreated word of Allah the whole the whole yeah. concept of the Quran heaven or not or, or do they unbecome the speech of Allah but that goes back to the argument is the Quran a created thing or is it an eternal Un, thing right uncreated uncreated word of Allah the whole the whole yeah. concept of the Quran being the uncreated word of Allah challenges the concept of tawhid which is the ma the most fundamental thing in islamic theology yeah. because yeah. if they're if they're uncreated like the the then that means that god did not allah did not precede the quran right that was a yeah. -like argument that if they're both uncreated then how could allah show up before he couldn't have created it because yeah. both of them are eternal no because now you have two it. divine things instead of one divine exactly thing. Yeah. yeah yeah oh my god so it's it's a we... huge mess. Like when you go to this theological ramifications of the Qirat and the Ahruf, it's a complete mess. Because like and political as well. Because actually, if you look at different when different Khalifas were supporting the different sides of this argument, I forgot exactly how, but it was very in line with whether people should accept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, Great. anyway, thank you, Abdullah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, problem. everyone. In like that. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna have you on again. So next. Oh, definitely, my pleasure. I'll make a proper presentation for the audience. You know, we'll go through slides and stuff, show yeah. them where the 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 variations in the Quranic text lie, so we can get rid of this myth that it's preserved. Oh, please. Yeah. yeah. Wait, can and, you do screen share? Does it have a screen share option? Yeah, here? yeah, you okay, can screen cool. share in this. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Uh, so okay, let's do it. Awesome. And, yeah. One of the things, a last the sort of like quick announcement for everybody is that uh, we've had some of our episodes in the past because we had our team changing and a little bit of a scuffle. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get them out. So because of the transition, yeah, we're going to have a lot of really, really good episodes that we're hiding in Patreon coming out on iTunes uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. So there's going to be a lot of content for you to hear here. And um, it's, go it's going to be actually pretty amazing. So uh be on the lookout for that and um well i mean if 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 you haven't heard it it means you're not a patron so maybe you should just <laughs> become a patron you just should be a patron then you haven't yeah. missed anything that's yeah. right that's right yeah so, link in the description friend, become a patron tell your right? non-friend patrons to subscribe to us on itunes because it's going to be uh, a deluge of like really really amazing uh, yeah content. come come become a patron and just hang out in the live chat with us we'll read your comments and your comments will be part of the podcast yeah all right okay everybody Abdullah, all right. good night
Armin. Love you guys. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And thanks to our thank patrons so for supporting your show. Bye. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Bye-bye. The Secular Jihadists have been made possible thanks to the Illuminati and the covert support of Israel and the CIA. That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topicandjihadists.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you. Thank <laughs> you.